Six million ways to die. Choose one. How would I try for though? Try for test. Today we are going to discuss the end of the world from a voodoo practitioner's point of view. First and foremost, this is not a theme talked about in traditional voodoo practices. This is my interpretation. Second, because this is not a common concept talked about in voodoo, we will have to pull information from other sources to attempt to come to conclusions. If you look at what is going on in the world, it appears unsettling. But what is even more unsettling is the fact that many or most catastrophes, natural and unnatural, have been prophesied in many religious traditions throughout the world. One of those traditions being Islam. The Quran has been proven to be scientifically factual in nature with a heavy focus on end times, including signs. Due to this, we will use the Holy Quran as the main evidence when assessing end times and how it relates to voodoo. What is happening in our world right now is a sign of the times and times to come. When becoming spiritual, one needs to stay informed on what is going on in the world, not just what pertains to them. Our earth has been through many cycles or phases. In occultism, this is known as epochs. Each epoch, different creations exist, as well as different gods and animal species. Our current epoch is the Iron Age and is reaching its end stages. The cycle to follow is the Gold Age. Each cycle or epoch tends to end by way of natural disasters orchestrated by unseen forces that govern our world. At the end of the Atlantean epoch, for example, beings that existed then went into the water and ground during the end and stayed there. This is the origin point for many gods you see existing in ATRs, including voodoo. Once a cycle ends, a new one begins with a different dominating species, different gods and animals, etc. So during the initial creation process of our world, there existed pulses of the universe. Think of it as the blood and veins that pulse throughout our body, supplying our organs with the oxygen and nutrients needed to sustain us. Well, the universe also has pulses that exist on and within her that help sustain and renew her or our environment. One of those pulses is the pulse or rhythm or vibration of death. Death is a universal force that crosses all races, religions, backgrounds, land masses, and cultures. People within many cultures have decoded death as a force that comes in human form and is always male, related to his origin point of Geburah on the tree of life. Different cultures and people will decode him in different ways, but they are all decoding the same force which is not always true for every god or spirit. Part of the problem is when you put a face to a god, you forget that it is a force in nature and not a person. Take this example. Say there is a supermarket in a small town. The persons of that town go to the supermarket every day. These people are able to sense psychically that this supermarket has a spirit within it. They then give it a face based on their own personal experiences then begin to praise that supermarket loa for all the good food it provides them. They make songs and continue to sing to it on a regular basis and frequent the store to talk to the spirit. Say these people then relocate to a different part of town and stop their praise of the supermarket loa. The supermarket loa is no longer getting fed, so it would die out. This is true for many gods of the past who are no longer active, however, the force of death is always active and will be until the end of this cycle. It is important to remember that there are gods that were actual people, but the force of death is not a person, but takes on human form when interacting with us. We can only perceive so much of this energy that corresponds to death because of our human limitations. Now onto the end of the world and how it relates to voodoo. The God Butcher is a character that exists within the Marvel comic book Pantheon and is a take on the most prominent figure or form of death we know in modern times, Baron Samdi. What is the God Butcher's role in the Marvel Pantheon? Well, he kills gods, especially gods who are not serving their purpose and assisting humanity. Baron Samdi is the force of death made personified and is responsible for the reaping of all souls on Malakuth, including gods. We can look to the Quran to understand the role of Baron Samdi on a broader scale. Each culture has their own interpretation of death. 
In some cultures, he is known as the Grim Reaper. He is also the only Loa that is on the tarot cards. He is the Yama of Hindu tradition. In the Quran, Baron Samdi is known as the Angel of Death or Azrael of both Jewish and Islamic tradition. In the Quran, he plays a major role in end times. Many loa represent aspects of nature, and these aspects of nature have a direct link to communicating with her through what is called the Gia Network. The Gia Network is like the internet of nature, and she uses this to communicate to plants, animals, and even humans at one time. The communication of nature via the Gia Network to animals can be seen, for example, when fish are able to sense major weather changes and attempt to leave that environment or when many underground animals like rodents will leave their homes weeks to a few minutes before an earthquake. This is due to their constant connection and communication with nature via the Gia network. The Loa also have been able to maintain this connection to nature and communicate with her. Many of the Loa will know or get a signal when the end times are near, one of those being Baron Somni. Now let's take a look at his role in the end times according to the Quran. And when there is darkness everywhere, nothing will remain. Every single thing in the universe will come to an end. The hadith of Abu Huraira says, that the angel of death, it will say to Allah, Oh Allah, all those are in the heaven and all those are in the dunya, they have come to an end. Except for those who you wish to remain alive, oh Allah, Allah will say, Who remains? And the angel will say, Oh Allah, Jibrail remains, Mikael remains, Israfil remains, and the angels who are carrying your throne, they remain. Allah the Almighty will say, Let death come to Jibrail, let death come to Mikael. Let death come to Israfil and let death come to all those angels who are carrying my throne. Then Allah will say, who remains? Yeah, Allah knows who remains. Allah will say to the angel of death, who remains? And the angel will say, oh Allah, I remain, you remain, no one else remains. Yeah, then Allah will say, I created you for a purpose. You have fulfilled your purpose. You also die and he will die. Many signs of end times have already become fulfilled and some have yet to be fulfilled per the Quran. For example, the Quran states that there will be the construction of tall buildings and men boasting about it. And Islamic historians believe that the Quran is referring to the many buildings that have been built in Dubai, including the Baraj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world. I'd like to also make a side note to anyone who is intrigued by Dubai should check their instincts. Dubai is a sign of the end times with its falsely created environment, use of slaves, and the fact that they literally have to haul your shit away on a truck because there is no sewage. The Quran also states that earthquakes will increase in the West and fires will be seen in the ocean, which has already happened. The end of the world is a scientific concept as well. Its theory has been studied by physicists and verified through the discovery of the Higgs boson particle. The Higgs boson particle is said to be the particle that created the Big Bang and is also the particle that will be responsible for the destruction of our world. Hi. On September the 7th, 2014, in an article in the Daily Mail, the famous physicist Professor Stephen Hawking warns that according to his calculations, the planet we're living in is unstable and therefore might collapse an analogy to Higgs bosons. So to summarize, Higgs boson is an elusive subatomic particle that we can't see, but can see how it gives particles substance or mass. It's essentially what gives shape, size and mass to everything that exists. But the problem is that the Higgs particle that the LHC had found possesses a mass of approximately 126 giga electron volts. And this has made physicists rather nervous because they believe it should be 127. 
According to physicists such as Stephen Hawking, Joseph Lichen and Benjamin Allenach, this discrepancy could very well mean the collapse of the universe and everything in it, including you and I, as everything will become massless, and they are not alone in their assertions. In fact, the Quran also swears that this will take place when the world ends, when it says, it is the day when people will be like scattered moths and the mountains shall be as loosened wool. People like moths and mountains like wool sounds like mass loss to me. But there's something else. The point of this video is to share the importance of having a solar spiritual practice along with your lunar practices. Lunar practices are your connection to nature. However, solar spirituality is your connection to God. Combining lunar and solar spirituality enhances your connection to the mother and father aspects of God. In Hermeticism, it is believed that your connection to your higher guardian angel is your only way to evolve beyond our current state. It is also believed that this connection is the way to protect yourself in end times. Solar spirituality, whether it be esoteric or exoteric in nature, through modes of Islam or Sufism, Gnosticism, or esoteric Judaism, is important to have for the times to come, as Baron Samdi will only be doing the job he is designed to do, which is reaping every soul on the planet. The practice of solar spirituality ensures you do not suffer the same fate as the gods and humanity of our past.